Hello, and today we're going to talk about Dietrich Bonhoeffer. On Bonhoeffer in 12 points. So let me give you an overview of Dietrich Bonhoeffer in 12 basic points from his birth until his execution by the Nazis. Now, Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a German Protestant theologian who supported a failed plot to kill Adolf Hitler. Point number one, Bonhoeffer's birth and family. Now, Bonhoeffer was born February 4, 1906 in Breslau, Germany. He had a twin sister, Sabine, who would later marry a Jewish man named Gerhard Liebholz. The Nazis' threat to his sister and her Jewish husband was one reason that Bonhoeffer opposed them. Bonhoeffer had six other siblings, three brothers and three sisters. His mother was Paula, and his father was Karl Bonhoeffer, a distinguished psychiatrist at the University of Berlin. So he came from quite an educated family. Point number two, Bonhoeffer's education. Bonhoeffer was, by most reports, an exceptionally bright man. He went to Tübingen University at age 17, and the very next year, the University of Berlin in 1924. By 1930, he had completed his doctorate and was a lecturer in systematic theology at the University of Berlin. He was only 24. Point number three, Bonhoeffer's travels. Bonhoeffer traveled widely before becoming an opponent of the Nazis. He had pastoral duties in Spain, London, visited America twice, went to Sweden, Switzerland, amongst other places. He even wanted to meet Mohandas K. Gandhi in India and received an invitation from Gandhi. Had Gandhi met Bonhoeffer, I imagine Gandhi would have really challenged some of Bonhoeffer's, you could say, Christocentric views. Sadly, Bonhoeffer was never able to meet with Gandhi. He was never able to make the trip. Point number four, Bonhoeffer's religious views. Bonhoeffer had been called many things from a Christian humanist to being a conservative and perhaps a bit Christocentric. My own view of Bonhoeffer is that he was strongly rooted in a Christian biblical faith and was passionately concerned about spelling out what that faith meant to the modern world, to the German world. Swiss theologian Karl Barth was amongst his primary influences, and Bonhoeffer tended to see some liberal theology as too watered down. Point number five, the Nazis and the Aryan paragraph. Now, when Hitler came to power, Bonhoeffer and his entire family were very opposed to him. When the Aryan paragraph of the Nazi regime in 1933 threatened Jewish-born and converted members of the German church, Bonhoeffer opposed it. He saw the Nazis as a real threat to German religion and society. Point number six, the German Christians. Now, the Nazis used Christian theologies towards their own end. But in Eric Metaxas's book, he makes a strong case that the Nazis were not Christians. And I think I agree with, with uh, Metaxas there. In fact, Hitler's ideology was vigorously opposed to Christian ideals. Whenever Christian anti-Semitism was evident, and sadly it was, and frustrations and failure with the aftermath of World War I was there and those abounded, the Nazis used those to their advantage to gain support. But at heart, they were decidedly anti-Christian. And I would agree that they were that. Loving your neighbor does not include murdering him and burning him in an oven. When the Nazis wanted to install their puppet, Ludwig Mueller, as the head of the German church, Bonhoeffer and many others were opposed to it. Point number seven, the confessing church. Now, Christian theologian Martin Niemöller was among those Germans who saw that Hitler was up to no good and realized that Hitler was a deadly threat and unchristian. Niemöller, amongst many others, such as Bonhoeffer, were among the very early members of the Confessing Church, which was established as a protest to the Nazi takeover of the established 
German church. The basic ideas of the Confessing Church began to be laid out as early as 1934. Now, the Nazis caught on fast, however, and by 1937, they had effectively tried to shut down the Confessing Church. Niemöller was arrested in that same year, 1937, and Bonhoeffer was detained for questioning. I believe he was detained for about seven hours, at least, according to Metaxas. Point number eight, resistance and trips to America. Bonhoeffer's own sister had to flee Germany to Switzerland when the Nazi threat to the Jews and their families increased. She did so in 1938, just a few months, just a short while before the infamous German Kristallnacht, the killing of German Jews and the destruction of Jewish businesses on November 9, 1938. Bonhoeffer was also under threat of being drafted into the Nazi army at that time. His final visit to America in 1939 was aided by the help of Reinhold Niebuhr, his Union Theological Seminary teacher from his prior visit. When Bonhoeffer came to America, however, he felt anguished. He felt painstakingly separated from the plight of all those he loved back in Germany. He simply had to go back and help, and so he did not want to take sanctuary from the war in America. That was not an option for him. Point number nine, joining the Abwehr, or the German military intelligence. Now, when Bonhoeffer did come back to Germany, he soon joined the Abwehr, the German military intelligence. Bonhoeffer hadn't actually turned sides. He had just pretended to do so by going undercover. Now, Bonhoeffer's family was well connected to the resistance movement. And Bonhoeffer served the resistance in the Abwehr under his brother-in-law, Hans von Donjani. Both he and Hans would be executed as well as countless others when their resistance to Hitler was finally discovered. Bonhoeffer was not himself an assassin, but did support the plot and played an important role and passing off intelligence to his British allies. He had a contact, Bishop George Bell of Chinchester, and other European contacts that he was trying to secure to help with alliances after the time of Hitler's assassination. Point number 10, the first plot to kill Hitler and Bonhoeffer's late love. Even in the early years, there were many German generals and officials who were alarmed by Hitler and saw the need to depose or kill him. I will talk of two plots which failed. First, Operation Flash was an attempt to blow up Hitler in his plane on March 13, 1943. A false bottle of brandy actually containing a bomb was smuggled onto Hitler's plane, bound for Smolensk with Hitler. The detonator did not work, however, and the fake brandy bottle had to be recovered before it was detected and the plot revealed. Thankfully, it was, and for the moment, the plot to kill Hitler went on. By this time, Bonhoeffer had already met Riemann Wedemeyer, and the two had fallen in love. His letter to her on January 17, 1943, had basically confirmed his proposal to marry her. Before he ever could, he would be arrested. On April 5, 1943, Bonhoeffer was arrested, but not initially on charges for trying to kill Hitler. They didn't know about that yet. The Nazis would not discover that until later. Originally, Bonhoeffer was arrested for using money to aid Jews in escaping Nazi Germany, which he had indeed done. It was called Operation 7. Point number 11, the second plot to kill Hitler. As I said, there were many who wanted to kill Hitler. Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg led the July 20, 1944 plot to kill Hitler, which was called Operation Valkyrie. You may have seen the movie starring Tom Cruise as the colonel. This plot attempted to kill Adolf Hitler by planting a bomb during a staff meeting in Hitler's bunker. bunker. The bomb did actually go off, but Hitler was shielded from the blast and escaped major injury. 
The major conspirators were arrested and promptly executed, Colonel Stauffenberg included. Stauffenberg had said, It's time now for something to be done. He who has the courage to act must, must know that he will probably go down in Germany, German history as a traitor. But if he fails to act, he will be a traitor before his own conscience. That's in the Metaxas book on Bonhoeffer, page 475. Next, point 12, Bonhoeffer's execution and legacy. After the failure of the Valkyrie plot, there was an accelerated flurry of activity to try and locate all those conspirators connected to the plot to kill Hitler. Now, Bonhoeffer had been in Tegel prison for about a year before it would be discovered and before he would be transferred to another prison. As Allied assault advanced and Nazi Germany crumbled, Bonhoeffer's execution would be ordered just days before his prison camp was liberated by the Allies. On April 9, 1945, Bonhoeffer went to his death, a hanging by execution, or execution by hanging. A tragic fate that could have been avoided, yes, but also a fact that made him a Christian martyr and a hero to many others. Bonhoeffer's legacy reminds us that Nazism was not, was not inherently a German thing because there were many Germans who abhorred it and deplored it. Bonhoeffer's legacy reminds us of the better spirit of Christianity and of German citizenship, of resisting evils wherever they are and wherever they arise. So that's a short introduction on Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Hope you learned something, like and subscribe, and thank you.